All right, hello, welcome to the weather update. It's 10 o'clock, March 17th, 2021. We've got a big storm on the way for tomorrow with lots of rain, uh, but uh, there's a lot of severe weather actually with this uh, storm uh, that is heading our way. And you can see, look at all of it uh, stretching through uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, um, Alabama, Mississippi. This is a really intense line of thunderstorms here uh, that has developed. Uh, and is moving eastward and we're going to get into some of this as rain but it will be heavy rain um, you can also see another section of it here around Missouri uh, and on this back side around Wichita some snow uh, that's coming down so when we look at this uh, you will see a, a huge area of tornado watches here's a tornado warning got flash flood warnings severe thunderstorm warnings all going off in this area right now uh, so this is quite an intense storm and I believe that there's a lot there's a lot of energy. You can see how warm it is uh, where these storms are occurring. With 75 degrees, dew point 64. So this is pretty warm, humid air coming off the Gulf uh, that's fueling the energy for these storms. And again, we're seeing we're going to see the moisture from this in our area tomorrow. Um, let's go look at the lightning as well. Let's uh, figure that out because we do have the lightning. Uh, that there probably is a lot of lightning with these storms too as well. Uh, let's see if we got a lot of lightning here. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Can't even keep up. That's that's a tremendous around New Orleans. Looks like they're getting pounded right now. Uh, so a lot of lightning uh, with these storms as well. Uh, so, yeah, these storms are just firing up tonight. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a huge severe weather event for the southeast and the south uh, with this. Um, however, in our area, um, we won't be seeing any severe weather. But we will be seeing plenty of rain. So 42 degrees at Farmingdale. Uh, we got in the mid to upper 40s today with that southeast flow. Cloud cover, obviously, no sun out uh, for today. And we have uh, this huge storm system right here. So looking at the satellite, you can take a look and see this huge storm system here that is in the south, uh, in the central part of the country, and that moisture feed literally coming right up from the Gulf there. And when you have all that warm water, uh, that is going to bring all that moisture from that Gulf of Mexico up into the system to fuel the energy uh, and, and create this severe weather. And you have this rotation in the atmosphere here and this dry front uh, that's uh, coming, this dry front that's coming through. Uh, so that's helping to create the lift and the mechanism for all this severe weather going on. Um, so... Let's look at the models, and we will go ahead and looking at the GFS here at this system as it moves east. So uh, you see it moves east, and this, this, this storm just tightens up. Uh, and then uh, you start seeing the rain quickly move into our area tomorrow, and it's going to be with us uh, tomorrow right through uh, Friday, and then possibly Friday, well, Friday morning, it might end as a little snow before the high builds in and gives us a nice weekend here. Um, and you can see uh, this is kind of interesting that it's keep continuing to develop this particular system uh, off the southeast coast here. Could that be tropical in nature? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, so let's get a closer look at, at this system as it moves into our area. Uh, and we will first look at the GFS. So uh, here you can see that rain. Look at how quickly that rain moves in. So by early afternoon, noontime, it's already raining. And it's going to be raining, possibly heavy at times, right through the night. Uh, and then the cold front comes through. Uh, but this is kind of like a slow-moving front with a little bit of uh, moisture in behind it. So you see there's a little snow there a little, and a little another piece of energy that is now over the uh, Delmarva area that may actually bring some snow uh, on the GFS and then the high builds in. So let's take a look and see what the GFS is calling for with total accumulating precip. And you'll see here plenty of rain. So at least you get between one and two inches, which is great news because it's been bone dry across our entire area. And this will finally put a stop to the fire danger uh, that we've been dealing with for a while now. So finally, uh, you know, the woods are just very, very dry and we need rain badly. Uh, you know, we get go through these periods where it's just constant moisture, and then we have periods of constant dryness when, you know, this is all part of the climate change, uh, is that you have these, uh, it's either extremely wet or extremely dry and not just right uh, kind of situations. Uh, 
you know, but it's better to be a little too wet right now because we have we have been very dry. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the total snowfall as well on the GFS, and you'll see that it's calling for some accumulation, maybe an inch or two, perhaps, especially up in the Hudson Valley. Um, however, this is not the best resolution model to use, so that's why I want to go back and look at some of the uh, the uh, mesoscale models, the short range models. Uh, and uh, we'll look at that. So let's go to the HRRR, and we do have the 0Z HRRR to work with, so that's very good. Uh, and this will give us a higher resolution as to what's going to happen for tomorrow. You'd see that moisture quickly moving into our area. So it's raining by noon, I think. And that rain is going to continue, possibly heavy at times. You see some yellows there in the afternoon. Um, maybe a little bit of a break. I think the rain continues, though. It may be become more showery in nature uh, as you head toward uh, the... Um, uh, later fr thursday night into midnight friday and then here comes that cold front uh that comes through friday and you can see on the back side uh a little bit of moisture there a little bit of moisture and then you can see this little piece of energy that's going to also try to get going off the coast there almost like a secondary low uh let's see how much the h triple r is calling for as far as t far as total rainfall goes and it's somewhere around an inch uh between one and two inches of rain uh what about total snowfall uh, well, yeah, look at that. Wow. It's, so it's saying we could see one to two, and there's a little area over Nassau County of two inches. Uh, one to two inches of snow possible from this uh, with more over New England. Uh, so and look at that. I see a, maybe even a three or a four in the southern part of Jersey. Again, it won't stick around, but we will have, this is like winter's last gasp here. Uh, winter is trying to uh, say it's not over yet. Uh, and that's where we're going to get uh, get some a little more snow out of it. A little rain and a little more snow as well. Um, so that is that. That is the HRRR. Uh, let's go look at the NAM 12 as far as the snowfall goes. All right, that's the 0Z, which we don't have enough in. So let's take a look at the, the NAM 12. We'll start off first looking at the presentation of the, of the precipitation as it comes on in. And you will see there's that heavy rain that we're going to be getting into. And it's going to start in the afternoon. It's going to be raining heavy right through the evening. Uh, and then it lets off uh, around uh, Friday morning. Oh boy! Sorry about that. You didn't hear me. <laughs> I was my mistake. Uh, the Nam's not that impressive with the snow uh, fall totals. This is the the uh, uh, the total accumulated precip, and then this is the snowfall. So uh, Nam not quite as impressive with that. My mistake. I'm sorry. I had a, you know when I got it. Sometimes I get a phone call when I'm in the middle of doing weather updates, so I can't, I can't you know I get a little off track. Uh, but anyway, so uh, it's going to be pretty wet uh, for uh, tomorrow. So let's go look at the back to the HRRR. We're going to go ahead and look at our temperatures and show you what, how that temperatures are going to change uh, as we go into tomorrow here. So you'll see here uh, that uh, we had tomorrow we have temperatures in the upper 40s to around 50. Uh, but then you see that cold air come in Friday. And this is the issue. Once that cold air comes in, we go below freezing in the morning, and that's when the snow could accumulate. Uh, and as we get into the afternoon, temperatures rise into the mid-30s, but after that, they're not really going to get a whole lot warmer than that. Um, and th that's the thing um, with the snowfall. And I guess we're going to have to just keep... It's very hard to say exactly how much we'll get. It probably would be an inch or two. Uh, we're also looking at the dew points to show you the moisture also coming in. Look at that collision of the air masses. Look at all this humidity off to the south, and then the dry air off to the north that kind of works in. And you'll also notice strong winds for Friday as well. That is the other thing that we have to deal with as well uh, with this is the wind. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the wind here. Uh, and you'll notice some strong winds Friday that we're going to have to deal with. Might need a wind advisory with this as well. Uh, we're going to have some strong winds. Um, let's go look at the NAM 12 with the winds here as well on this. 
and actually we have enough of the zero z now to look at the winds so uh you can see uh the strong winds o overnight friday strong northeasterly winds um might need a wind advisory fortunately we're getting plenty of precipitation which means that we will not have to deal with uh, fire danger so you know that's very fortunate because if this was if this was dry and we didn't get any precipitation we would really have to worry uh but fortunately we won't have to but yeah look at some of these strong winds that are going to be affecting uh this area here off the off the cape they're in the red so uh it's gonna be quite a pressure gradient developing uh for later fr uh, throughout friday uh on the nam here you can see it only look at the gfs as well with this uh and you can see uh, looking at again this pressure gradient is really impressive uh, and again, some really impressive winds offshore, very strong winds, the pressure gradient between the storm and the high building down uh, is quite, uh, quite impressive indeed. Let's go look at the, uh, the uh, clouds, I guess we'll look at the clouds. Uh, so obviously we're not going to see the sun the next two days. Uh, but Saturday, we push that front to the south and we should have plenty of sun Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, we may have to worry about a few more clouds coming into the picture. But I'm not really too concerned about that right now. we got to focus on the storm. Uh, we're going to go to windy.com, which is the European model, and go ahead and look at some of the snowfall fork predictions for this, for this model here. And we'll start with the rain accumulation for the next three days. Uh, this would be uh, for the whole storm. So uh, look at that, 1.87. So again, that 1 to 2 inch uh, mark. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the new snow accumulation. It's not really, the euro is not saying 0.3. The euro is not giving us much. So it's really hard to predict what's going to happen on the backside of the storm. You know, a, t a tenth of an inch is going to make a difference. Uh, a tenth of an inch of liquid is going to make a difference with the snow. And it's really hard to say where that's going to happen. However, if you're in New England, this is where the euro is really giving you a lot of snow. Like uh, uh, north of Boston, 7.4 inches, which is quite impressive. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the wind. So let's go ahead and look at that wind uh, as we head into th Friday night here. And you'll see uh, that we, we do, I meant Thursday night. And you can see, look at the wind picking up. Uh, and this is going to be a concern for Friday morning. Uh, north at 29, so some really strong northerly winds. And I, I don't even have the gusts in here yet. Uh, this is north at 31. Um, uh, if I put the gusts in... Uh, you'll see it gets even worse than that. So uh, 50 mile an hour gusts in the east end, 44. Uh, and then we move this along into Friday, 11 a.m. Uh, and you'll see these very strong wind gusts uh, that uh, will occur. Fifth, up to 50 miles an hour, I think, is possible across much of Long Island, perhaps uh, with this, uh, with this uh, behind the system. And it's going to get, get much colder. So it's going to be the 30s. The mid-30s is going to feel like the 20s. And if there's snow on the ground, it's really going to be quite uh quite in front this is quite a storm here you can see how how far it goes out uh on the uh system on the on the map uh so quite a storm and again this is a concern now the gfs was showing even stronger winds which i want to actually look at here for a moment i think the gfs was showing this also i can use the gfs i can use a bunch of models here um 52 mile an hour wind gusts and yeah, there's a lot of these, it's the sustained winds that are really impressive. So these areas like Cape Hatteras, they're going to get a lot of winds, a so possible coastal flooding, because if you look at the wind direction, you'll see that east northeasterly component, uh, which would definitely bring in uh, some flooding. So I, actually, what we need to do now, I guess, and the last thing we'll look at here, uh, waves. Uh, and you can see here... Uh, along the jersey shore uh a 10 foot 10 foot swell so and out over the open ocean we're dealing with 20 nearly 20 foot waves uh in the open ocean so that's pretty impressive here oh yeah let me use the european for that one that's right i was using the noah so um so 15 foot offshore uh this is a friday morning uh and again so there's going to be a numerous impacts from this storm and again out over the open ocean you're dealing close to 20 foot waves uh but then at the jersey shore you're dealing with 10 to 15 foot waves uh so there's going to be a potential for coastal flooding particularly in the jersey shore and maybe parts of long island as well maybe the east end uh quite an impressive storm uh that this is going to be causing with the with the waves uh, so let's uh, let's look at one more thing, and that's this map, which, again, is quite unusual. Uh, when we go to this map here, 
Let's see if we can make this map larger. I guess we can't. Um, but look at that. Uh, uh, you see a high. We rarely ever see this um, in a severe weather risk that this is high. That's the highest on the scale for severe weather. So this is the highest on the scale for severe weather. We, we have marginal, slight, enhanced, moderate. Uh, and look at this area that is high. That is the highest risk possible. So this is going to be a very bad severe weather outbreak. And it looks like it's centered right around Alabama. So uh, this is going to be a very bad situation uh, that is going to be developing in the southeast. Uh, and uh, quite unusual to see this. But again, due to climate change, we are going to see all kinds of extremes uh, that we have to prepare ourselves for. So uh, that's going to wrap up this weather update. Take care and thank you for watching.